Okay, so this is a new topic on vectors. So recall what you did in physics. In scalar, we talk about a number, which is the magnitude. It will tell you about the size, how big and how small they are. So examples of scalar, what you all gave me were weight, mass, volume, speed and temperature. But in vector, there is an added dimension. Okay, take note. Not only must you have a magnitude, there must be direction. You must know where it's heading. So some of the examples you all gave me that you all learned in physics are both velocity and displacement. We'll see this in AMF subsequently. Yeah? Okay, column vector is an extension from what you learn in matrix itself. All right, but in this chapter called vector, your column vector will only be a two by one metric. So the number on top in the column vector will tell you the number of units along the x-axis. If it's a positive 4, I'm moving 4 units to the right side. If it's a negative 4, I'm moving 4 units to the left. Likewise, for the number below. So if I look at the number below, if the number is number 2 below, it means that I'm moving 2 units up. If it's negative 2, I'm moving 2 units down. So in this particular question, I'm supposed to represent all these vectors as a column vector. Let's take a look at the very first one. Alright, you can see the starting point is A. The ending point is B. For us to get from A to B, I have to move 3 units to the left, 4 units up. So if I want to represent this in a column vector, so as you all told me, the number on top is negative 3, number below is a 4, please remember to put your bracket. Oh, so for the vector D to E, looks like the start point is here, this is the end point, we move 5 units to the right, so I write down 5, but there's no movement up or down, so it can be a 0 below. Okay, so for the next vector called C, notice the start point is on top, the end point is below. Again, so this is vector C. Let me write down, it must be a column vector, column matrix. So I move in the x direction first. Looks like it's moving towards the left. Two units, so I write a negative two. After that, I need to go down. How many unit? Also two unit. So what should be the number below? Negative 2. So likewise, for this particular vector f, the start point is the top, the end point is the bottom. It's denoted by f, so I can write the column vector. Okay, so you can see the vector f is a 0, negative 3 based on the diagram. Okay, now that you know how to actually write the column vector, you know about the direction. The next thing is about the magnitude. So with the use of Pythagoras theorem, all right, there are two ways we can represent magnitude. One way is by the word magnitude. The other way is by this two-line symbol. I'm going to make use of it. And by Pythagoras theorem, this will be the formula. Okay? So let me apply to the four questions that we have. I want to find the magnitude of AB. So rather than writing the word magnitude, I can do the modular symbol, the two stroke. This means magnitude. Apply Pythagoras theorem, x squared plus y squared. Since there's a negative 3, I better put a bracket. Plus y squared, which is 4 squared. Press the calculator. This will give me 5 units. Okay, so after finding the column vector, by applying Pythagoras theorem, which is seen in the form of the magnitude formula, I can also find the respective magnitude of this column vector. 